Hi everyone, this is Cooking with Kurt. Today my husband Donald and I are going to show you how to make a Funfetti birthday naked layer cake with rainbow sprinkles. Kurt actually made this for my birthday last month and it was so good and we're so excited to show you how to make it. And my parents gifted us a stand mixer for Christmas so it's making its YouTube debut in this video. Thank you mom and dad. And this recipe was requested by Anupama Guru Prasad. Thank you so much Anupama for this request. We hope you like this video. To start, we're going to make the Funfetti crumbs. Preheat your oven to 300 degrees Fahrenheit and take a large sheet pan and line it with parchment paper. Take the mixing bowl of your stand mixer and add in one cup of cake flour or all-purpose flour. Either will work for the crumbs. 1 third cup of granulated sugar, 2 tablespoons of light brown sugar, 3 fourth teaspoon of baking powder, 1 eighth teaspoon of table salt, and 2 tablespoons of rainbow sprinkles. Fit your stand mixer with a paddle attachment and mix these dry ingredients on low speed until they are well combined. When the dry ingredients are combined, while continuing to mix on low, add in one third cup of vegetable oil and one tablespoon of clear vanilla extract. Clear vanilla extract is used throughout this recipe to make the crumbs, cake, and frosting as stark white as possible in imitation of the boxed cake mix funfetti cakes made popular in the 90s. But you can also use regular vanilla extract if clear vanilla extract is not available. Just keep in mind that your cake and frosting may be slightly darker. Continue mixing on low speed till you see small clusters forming, like this. Some clusters will be larger and some will be smaller. Stop your mixer and pour the crumble mixture onto the prepared parchment paper lined sheet pan. Then with the palm of your hands out of the smaller clusters, create about 14 to 15 balls, about 3 4th to 1 inch in diameter. These balls will be used for topping the cake at the end. Spread your crumble clusters in the 3 4th inch size balls evenly over the baking sheet. We're going to bake these in our preheated oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for a total of 18 to 20 minutes. Stir the clusters and larger balls once or twice during that time to make sure they brown evenly. At the end, they should still be slightly moist to the touch and they'll become crunchy as they cool. Keep the 14 to 15 larger balls separate from the remaining smaller clusters. Let these Funfetti crumbs and balls come completely to room temperature. They can be made in advance and stored in an airtight container at room temperature for one week or in the fridge or freezer for up to one month. Next we're going to make the Funfetti cake layers. Take a half sheet pan which is 13 by 18 inches. Generously butter the pan or grease it with oil. And then line the buttered pan with parchment paper. Then in a measuring cup, Add in a two-third cup of buttermilk, half a cup of vegetable oil, and one tablespoon of clear vanilla extract. Mix these together and set aside. Next, take a medium-sized bowl and add in two and a half cups of cake flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, one-fourth teaspoon of table salt, and a third cup of rainbow sprinkles. Whisk these together to combine and set this aside. Take the mixing bowl of your stand mixer, add in one cup of granulated sugar, one fourth cup of light brown sugar, half a cup of vegetable shortening, and six tablespoons of room temperature unsalted butter. Attach the bowl to your mixer. Then fit your mixer with the panel attachment. If you have a paddle attachment that has a flexible edge like this, we suggest using it so you won't have to scrape down the ingredients from the side of your bowl. If you only have a regular paddle attachment like this, make sure to manually scrape the bowl occasionally as it gets mixed. Turn your stand mixer on to medium-high speed for about 2-3 to three minutes until the mixture of fats look light and fluffy. Then add in 4 room temperature eggs adding them one egg at a time, 
so that the previous egg is fully incorporated before adding in the next one. When all the eggs have been added, continue mixing at medium-high speed for another 3 minutes. Then turn the speed down to low and very slowly pour in the buttermilk mixture. When all of the buttermilk mixture has been added, increase the speed back to medium-high and continue to beat for another 4 to 6 minutes or until the mixture looks smooth. When the batter looks light, airy, and pale yellow and you no longer see any unmixed streaks, turn the speed down to low and slowly add in the flour mixture. When all the dry ingredients have been added, continue to mix on low for another one minute or until the batter just comes together. Stop the mixture and detach the bowl. Scrape down the sides and bottom of the bowl as needed and then spread this funfetti cake batter into an even layer in the prepared 13 inch by 18 inch sheet pan. Smooth it out as much as possible with your spatula. Then evenly scatter two tablespoons of additional rainbow sprinkles on top of the batter. We're going to bake this in our preheated oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 28 to 30 minutes or until the cake looks light golden brown and the top surface springs back when gently pressed. Place the pan on a wire rack and let it cool completely to room temperature. Once the cake is cooled, you can assemble it immediately or wrap it up in plastic and store it in the fridge for up to five days. While we're waiting for our cake to cool, we're going to work on our white frosting. Take the clean mixing bowl of your stand mixer Add in 16 tablespoons, which is two sticks, of room temperature unsalted butter, half a cup of vegetable shortening, and four ounces, which is half a bar, of cream cheese. Once again, fit your stand mixer with a paddle attachment, one with a flexible edge if you have it, and turn on the stand mixer to medium-high speed for two to three minutes until the mixture is smooth and fluffy. Then turn the speed down to the lowest speed and slowly add in 2 tablespoons of light corn syrup and 2 tablespoons of clear vanilla extract. Increase the speed back to medium high and beat for 2 to 3 minutes until the mixture looks silky smooth and glossy white. Turn off the mixture and scrape the sides and bottom of the bowl if necessary. Turn on to low speed and add in 2 cups of powdered sugar, half a teaspoon of table salt, 1 fourth teaspoon of baking powder, and 1 fourth teaspoon of lemon juice. The acidity from the small amount of lemon juice will balance out the sweetness of the frosting. When the ingredients look incorporated, increase the speed back to medium high and continue beating for another 2 to 3 minutes until the frosting is completely smooth, like this. You can use this frosting immediately or store it in an airtight container in the fridge for up to one week. Just bring it to room temperature before frosting your cake. The final component is the cake soak. Take a small bowl and add in a third cup of milk, any type works, and one teaspoon of clear vanilla extract. Mix this to combine. Once the cake is cooled to room temperature, we're ready to assemble the final cake. Yay! My birthday continues! <laughs> Place a large rectangular piece of parchment paper bigger than the 13 by 18 inch cake on top of the cake and quickly invert it onto a smooth flat surface. Carefully lift off the sheet pan and peel off the parchment paper the cake was baked with. Take an 8 inch cake ring. This is the same one we used for the Mango Bravo. We're going to try to make 3 8 inch cake circles out of our rectangular cake. So we have to think about it like a puzzle and not waste any precious cake area. So we're going to press it into the bottom right corner of your cake, twisting it to make your first full 8 inch cake round. Then along the opposite top edge of the cake, and as close to the first circle as possible, press the cake ring in again, twisting it to make your second full 8 inch cake round. 
These two full rounds will be the top two out of three layers of cake. Now the third layer of cake will be like a Frankenstein layer made of multiple pieces of cake put together. So wherever there's the most leftover cake, in this case it would be along the top edge above the first round, then this other area along the bottom edge below the second cake round, use the ring to make partial cake rounds as big as possible. These partial cake rounds, plus the remaining scraps, will be pieced together to make the third cake round, which will be used as the bottom layer of cake. Prepare whatever cake board or cake stand you'd like to serve your cake on. Take a clean and dry 8-inch cake ring and place it in the center of your cake stand. Make sure your ring is clean and dry, otherwise you'll have a hard time slipping it off in the end. Take a piece of acetate sheet that's 4 inches high and cut it about 26 inches long. And using the metal cake ring as an outer shell, create a circle with a 4 inch high acetate sheet so that it's the same circumference as the metal ring on the inside of the cake ring. This 4 inch high acetate sheet will support the height of the finished assembled cake. One at a time, Take the two partial cake rounds and place them in the ring opposite each other so that they form the opposite sides of the bottom layer. Then use the leftover scraps of cake to fill in the gaps between the partial rounds, placing them in any uneven gaps so that the bottom layer is as flat, circular, and level as possible. Then using a pastry brush, Generously moisten this base layer with one-third of the cake-soaked mixture we had prepared earlier. Avoid spilling the cake soak on the outside of the ring and acetate sheet, as this will make things stick and more difficult to slip the cake ring off later. Then using the back of a small spoon, spread about half a cup of the frosting in an even layer on top of the first layer of cake. Make sure you get the frosting all the way to the edges, touching the acetate sheet, moving in a figure eight or circular motion to make it as flat and even as possible. We're saving the larger Funfetti balls for the top, so take just the smaller Funfetti crumbs that we had set aside earlier and sprinkle half of it evenly over the top of the frosting. Use the back of your spoon to gently press them into the frosting so they don't move. Then like before, use the back of your spoon to spread another half a cup of the frosting as evenly as possible over the crumbs. Again, making sure to get it all the way to the edges touching the acetate sheet. Take one of the full cake rounds and place it on top as the second layer of cake. Gently tap it down with the back of your hand to make sure the layers are snug. This will make the layers look good with no awkward gaps in between. Then again, brush another one-third of the cake soak into the second layer of cake. Like before, spread about half a cup of the frosting over the cake. Sprinkle the remaining half of the smaller Funfetti crumbs evenly over the top of the frosting and press them down. Then spread another half a cup of the frosting over the crumbs, making sure to spread them all the way to the sides, touching the acetate sheet. Then take the last full cake round and place it on top as the third and final layer of cake. Gently tap it down like before. Brush the top with the last third of the cake soak. Then add the remaining frosting on top. Smoothen it out as flat and evenly as possible, making sure to go all the way to the sides, touching the acetate sheet. Decorate the top of the cake with the large Funfetti balls, either in a circle about half an inch from the edge or in whatever pattern you like. I'm gently pressing each ball slightly into the frosting so they don't move. Finally, scatter some additional rainbow sprinkles around the outer edges of the cake for decoration and color. 
we're going to place this finished cake in the fridge overnight for a minimum of 12 hours for the layers to set. If you're pressed for time, you can also put it in the freezer for a minimum of 3 hours. If you're using the freezer, transfer the cake into the fridge at least 3 hours before serving so it softens up a bit. And now, you can enjoy the leftover cake scraps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you're ready to serve it, carefully slip the metal cake ring off and slowly peel off the acetate sheet, exposing all of the beautiful layers of cake, frosting, and rainbow sprinkles. And there it is, a Funfetti birthday naked layer cake with rainbow sprinkles and white frosting. Ang sala. Mm. Wow. Mm, yum. This cake is like a birthday party in your mouth. <laughs> so good. It's like we're celebrating my birthday all over again. <laughs> Yay! Thank you all so much for watching. Please let us know in the comment section below if you're planning to make this birthday funfetti cake. Send us pictures of your creations on Facebook and Instagram. The links are below. And if you like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Cooking with Kurt. And don't forget to click on the bell so you get notified when we post new cooking videos. Maraming salamat!